Okay, here's your iOS app built entirely on your phone without writing a single line of code. We are going to build an iOS application on your phone in just a few minutes without writing a single line of code. To start, you need to sign up for free in Replit and Expo. Both of them link in the description. Replit helps you build an application with the help of AI and Expo helps you deploy it to iOS. So the first thing we need to do is to go on Google, Replit Remix, Expo. This is a pre-built Replit project that built by the Replit team that helps us connect Replit to Expo. You should be already logged in on Replit by now. So you just hit Remix and you choose a name for your application. Okay, it starts setting up our project. While this circle is spinning, this means it is being set up. Okay, now we hit play. This means it starts building a default project for us so we know what is going on. You won't see anything in the assistant tab, so you just change uh, to the console tab. And as you see, it is already starting to give us some stuff. We don't have to worry about the QR code right now. It should be, uh, it should start building. Yeah, it starts building some bundles. And um, there is a bug on uh, Replit application in the console tab that you can't scroll down. You have to scroll up a bit and before uh, releasing your finger, you then scroll down. You, you can't just scroll down. You should scroll up a bit and then scroll down for it to work. I don't know why, but that's how it works. So the bundles are complete. We change uh, to web view. This is a test environment to see how your app looks before actually publishing it. So it didn't work. We're just going to close the web view and we open another web view. By the way, uh, if you want to see all tabs and like search for a new tab that is not here, you click on this uh, Windows icon right here. So uh, as you see, the default application is working properly. So we want to open it on our phone as well. We take a screenshot. We need to open this QR code. So we just go back to photos and we open this QR code. Okay, it starts downloading some of the bundles and it starts building it actually on our phone. Okay, the project is working on our phone as well. This is a great uh, start. Now we see a default project that is both working in the development environment and on our phone. So now we should start building whatever we want. Um, before writing our prompt, this is a best practice. We should click on this settings right here and we can choose a different setting like export projects but by default this doesn't exist we should click on this icon right here and we add our own uh, prompt to let uh, the assistant know what this project is about so i wrote expo projects this is an expo project for building react native projects something that expo uses a technology that expo uses and the rest of it you can pause the video and like copy it and then we uh, change the context. Now the assistant knows that what we are building. So we don't have to explain it again. We just go ahead and say, create an application that gives me like a random cat picture every time I click a button. And I'm going to say like, make it uh, fun looking and give it a good UI. So that's it. Okay, it starts building the project. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff, but this this index.txt is big. Um, TSX is basically the homepage of our application. You can click on it and see the code, but you don't have to. We're just going to say apply it. And we should now see the changes in the web view. So we switch to web view, we refresh the page, and it works. So in our test environment, uh, now it worked. So in our test environment, it is working. We see the pictures of the cat and every time we click this button, it gives a, gives us a different uh, picture. I was expecting just pictures, but these are GIFs, even better. So it is working. So we go back to console view and we want to open this Expo project again to see if it works on our phone as well. But if you try it like I did, it won't work. You have to close the Expo projects. For, so 
it starts downloading and building the project again. So you close it and you open it uh, through the QR code again. And it actually worked. Like, this is unbelievable. We made a project on our phone. We made an iOS app on our phone and it is working without writing a single line of code. And it, this took us like less than five minutes until this point. So it is working on our phone, but um, this is still the development environment. So we want to actually take the next step and go for publishing it and deploying it. So for that, we click on this uh, window icon and we search for workflows. In workflows, these are some of uh, pre-built workflows by the Replit team. We click on EAS init, which is initialization of EAS. EAS is another name for Expo. It asks for our username inside the um, console tab and it asks for password. These are the username and password of the Expo uh, account that we already should have made we enter and we say yes this builds a project for us on Expo and links this project to that project on Expo now we go back to workflows again and this time we say yes update which means uh, it updates the states of our project here with a set of project on Expo, which basically means it uploads our project to Expo to make them the same version. So now our project is uploaded to Expo and Expo is ready to build our project and deploy it for web, Android, or iOS. So in this step, we are going to open another new tab and that's the shell tab. Um, this is my preferred way of doing it, but uh, there is another path that we are going to talk about. Uh, let me go back to right here. I go back to the workflows again to show you what's different. So as you see, there are two other steps. Publish preview iOS and publish preview Android. These are the pre-made steps by the Replit team, but I'm not going to go down this route. We'll, we are going to visit it in a minute, but you'll see why. So I'm going to go the easiest, easy way first. We are going back to shell, and we are just going to write a very simple command, expo uh, space export. So this actually starts building our project for, as you see, iOS, Android, and it's going to build another version for web. It should be done any moment now. Yeah, it worked, so... It exported our project. Now we write EAS deploy. As I said, EAS is another name for Expo, but this command works like this. So EAS deploy. This starts deploying our application and we should get a link anytime. Okay, so this is the link to our application, which is deployed this time. And let's see if it works. It is working great. So, um, another beautiful random cat so we're just gonna click on share and add to home screen and choose a name for our application then we click add and voila this is the first application installed on your phone entirely built on your phone without writing a single line of code so it is working this is a web application and I don't even know where does like this application gets all of these cats, but it is working. So now before taking the next steps, we need to talk about some things and clarify some stuff. Our application is installed and works fine, but this is not a native iOS application. It's a web app. Before I show you how to make the native version, you should know the differences and why you might want to consider each one. A web app can be visually indistinguishable from a native application. Like one of these X applications is the web app, and the other one is the native app. They look basically the same. You can't tell the difference. One of them is using the web technologies and one of them is working on the OS itself. But there are important differences as well. You need to have an Apple developer account that costs $100 per year and requires approval to make a native application. On the other hand, you can't publish a web application to the App Store, although people can download it from your website. My recommendation for beginners is always start with web for several reasons. 
First, you obviously don't need a developer account. Second, maintaining two different versions of your software, one for the web and another one for iOS, is extremely difficult. There are actually several other important long-term considerations, but we can't get too deep here. If you are really struggling with the choice, let me know the specifics in the community and I'll help you out. Now, if you've decided you want to build an iOS version, a native app version, we go through the next steps. So we are going to go back to Replet. And this time, instead of going through Shell, we go back to Workflows. So if you click on EAS Publish Preview iOS, you are going to get an error. And this says Missing Build Profile EAS. I don't know why this bug exists, but it does. So we are going to click on this icon right down here and then Folders. You are going to see all the files. You are going to delete EAS.json. Don't worry about it. It's just how it works. It, you delete it and the project rebuilds it itself and it gets rid of the bug. You click on uh, this new command and it starts building your native iOS application. You ask for your bundle name. By default, there is a name. So I just say, OK, choose whatever. It chooses the default name for my bundle. Then it asks for some sort of encryption. I don't actually know what it is, but I say yes, encrypt it or whatever. And then it says, do you want to log into your Apple account? You have to say yes. If you've already signed up for your Apple developer account, you've paid for it and it's approved, you can put it right here, Apple ID, then your password, then Expo builds a native app version for you, and you can install it on your phone build whatever you want, go through as many iterations as you want, and then when you decide to deploy, you go through this process. By the way, you can't actually uh, install it on your phone. You have to uh, first enable the developer mode on your iPhone, and then you can install it. Now you can create an app for iOS, Android, and web. But how do you monetize it and earn a few thousand dollars? Watch this short guide, which should be somewhere here, and learn how to easily monetize your applications.